It's parked up by the wall just past the entry of turn one. <laughs> I mean, there was like a quarter track almost of gap. But, and, and Kevin's like, oh, I'm going to stay back here. And, you know, he didn't want he didn't want to get real close to Kronk and kind of mess with them a little bit. But, I mean, he, he kept his distance and so they collected his thoughts. And when they got back under green, that's when the action happened because that was late oh, in the yeah. race. And that's when they started slide jobbing each other. And, oh, my god! I mean, they crossed each other. It looked like a like a like a. Kamikaze fighter pilots just like in the air, just like you know. <laughs> well, there was a, there was a couple of times that that Kronk was in the air. I mean, they were racing yeah. side oh, by yeah. side. Did you see yeah. that? There was at yeah. least twice, and I asked him about it on the front stretch interview, and uh, I can't remember what, exactly what his remark was. Corey, you remember what he said? Well, about he that? was just—I mean, he was laughing about he it. Was. I mean, he he actually, was. Oh yeah, totally. Because there was times where where Roberts was trying to make a pass and. and and or he was trying to pass Roberts. They were side by side. Right, and there was a, cu- a couple times there was contact made where the twenty nine car was actually up in the air on two. I mean, completely off Com- the ground, completely, and it would land on the the outer wheels and tires and roll back down on the inside. And and just great racing. That <laughs> they, was and, awesome. Nobody it, gained or you know, I mean, it was they were still side by side when he came back. Fortunately, no flat tires, and they it's, kept at it. Exactly. It was, and you know what? It reminded me so much of the opening race from two thousand sixteen with Colin Weinbarger. And John Campos. Yeah. If just the slide job, slide job after slide job after slide job. Very, yes, it was yeah. very comparable it, to oh, that type yeah. of thing, especially late in the race. I mean, it was unbelievable. And the fans, you want to talk about fans freaking out? That was it. Uh, street stock points right now. Street stock points right now. Kevin Roberts is the act, he's leading points at Willamette in the street stocks with 104 total points. Jody in a close second with 91. He's tied for second with David Oh, Kronk. he is. Fourth is Shannon Horn, and there's James Baker in the fifth spot. Now, I don't know if we're going to see James Baker a lot this year because once Sunset goes to racing, he, that's kind of his home track. Yeah, but look at but how good But given he, the fact he's in the top five against the best street stocks in the Northwest, right. it might be worth the toe down. Dakota yeah. Goddard's right there in sixth. Yep, and then you've got Jason Miller sitting back in seventh. Brandon Crawford, who is in Kyle Yak's old car that Kyle won the championship with, Jesse yep. Yankee, and Don Schott, another out of towner from up north, um, and the the eleven X the Nova. Those are, I mean, that's ten. Those are fast dudes right there. Yes, very. Mackenzie Lockhart in eleventh. You know, she's had some uh, what, what not such to good her? luck. She broke an axle. Bro- oh, yeah, man. a mud in, and it was from the week before. Right. The oh. track was rough the week before. She got out to mud in. She hit those ruts, and it just snapped the left rear. So we tried um, to get Corey's uncle to go get a, an axle out of a car he had at home, but he wasn't down for that. He wasn't going to do it. No. Some people. Oh, I'll tell you what, the look yeah, Mackenzie cr- gave him was... It's Corey's family, you know. They're, yeah. They're kind of that way. Bunch of jerks. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> We'll, t- we'll fill you in on that little joke yeah. later on. <laughs> oh. But yeah, the street stocks, you know. I mean, so Kronk walked out of there with five hundred dollars in cash. He should have been. He rode. He raced a street stock and got a modified payout. Exactly. Is that what Man. they pay the modifieds? Five hundred to win. Wow. Is a normal show. You'd buy a tire. Or. <laughs> 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 but, oh but, gosh! And, yeah, it pays five hundred here at at Willamette Speedway, five hundred at Grove. If you drive a late model at Grove, it's five hundred bucks. Wow. So here, um, Tracy Emery with uh, Dirt Princess Pro- Dirt Princess Productions says, "Hey, Dirt Princess Productions." Yeah, she says, "I got I got a real fun video of all that crazy exchange between the two of them." Tracy, we would like to have that video. Heck yeah, that is something we would love to put up on Moxie Media Promotions and. We'll definitely uh, credit you with uh, the footage of that. I didn't see that on Facebook. I know. Where's it at? What's she up with she that? posts her stuff on YouTube. Oh, oh, yeah. I see. You can check that out. Dirt Track Princess. Dirt Track Princess Productions. Tracy. Productions. Yeah. All right. Dirt Track Princess Productions on YouTube. She puts some pretty good stuff up. Yeah. And actually, Tracy we'll, we'll talk it. more it, about she's her. A hoot. Yeah, oh yeah. She is. <laughs> uh, we'll talk more about that uh, footage later on. But man, I mean, the street stocks. I thought was was no doubt was hands down hands down the race uh, that not just no of the question. night but so far that's the race of the year. Well, yeah. we were sitting there talking after you know all of us with the fire crew and some of the track staff. We were talking after the races. That was the race of the night. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you look at what happened in the modified race. You look at what happened in the late model race. The street stock race that night 
was the race, was the show of the night. That race, that particular race, I think is something that we'll be referring back to all season long. Oh, just yeah, because of a doubt. what happened and how those guys race each other, it's incredible. I, I, you know what? I, I think I think Willamette has, has started something. The fans have started something with that Iron Giant race closing out yes, the season last yes. year. Yes. And it's carrying on. I really didn't anticipate seeing that. I thought no, well, I thought that would be a one time thing because I was like, "Is this really happening?" All the money gathered by fans. Well, and that's the thing. We were on the front stretch, Warren and I, doing interviews for Trophy Dashes when uh, Roger, Roger that barbecue. Well, actually, I-, I lied. The person that approached us about it was Jerry Schram. Jerry says, "Hey, you know what that guy just did?" And he points <laughs> to Roger. I said, "Roger from Roger that." And he says, "Yeah." He goes, "What are you asking? What he just did?" And I said, "All right, what's up?" And Roger says, "Well, I just offered, I just offered uh, Kevin Roberts, Kevin Roberts, 150 bucks to start in the back. 150 to win if he starts in the back and wins." Right. I said, "Well, what did he say?" He says, "I don't know. Go ask him." <laughs> so I'm like, "Hey, are you going to take this challenge or what?" <laughs> Kevin looks at me and says, "Absolutely, I'll take that challenge. Let's like, go." Why are you even asking me? Yeah. <laughs> So then we got up in the we got up into the grandstands and and we were getting ready to go racing and I kind of told the crowd while I was on the track what what he just did, and it wasn't long after that we saw David from Northwest Trucking Academy. Honestly, I'm messing with David. I said, David, hey, Northwest Trucking right, Academy, right. you know, it's you gonna jump in on this deal or what? He looks you at know me. I am. He says, I'll drop a hundred on that. <laughs> so he you know he he pulls out his wallet, and hands me five twenties, and he goes. What are you going to do? Actually, I think he handed you 720s and you gave him two of them back. I should have. I should have kept the other two. I know. And said, I'll put 40 in. <laughs> That's what I should have done. But, oh, no, I looked at him. I said, you know what? I said, Jetstream will drop 50 on it. So then uh, while we were in the back doing the interview, talking about you know what the challenge was, was now up to 250 bucks. That's when, or it was up to 300 bucks at that, at that time. It was 150 from Roger, 100 from Northwest Dragon Academy, 50 from Jetstream. While we're back there talking about it, presenting the challenge, Joey Cannon's standing there, and he says, I'll pitch 50 in from Cannon Mobile RV Service, or Cannon Mobile RV and Repair. I said, all right. Uh, that's good news. Yeah. I said, all right, 50 bucks from Cannon. This is the cool part. James Baker was in his car for the street stock feature sitting on the pole. Unbuckles, gets out of his car, walks up to us and says, hey, Bridgeport Logistics. We're in for fifty bucks. Now it's four hundred dollars bonus money. <laughs> I'm going. You got to be kidding me. This is crazy. And it was money, uh, money well spent. I mean, it was. It put on a show of. Of. I mean, we're going to talk about that one for a long time. We'll be talking about it next year. Oh yeah, absolutely. without a doubt, without a doubt. And when you see two guys with that much talent in a race car shoot it out head to head. I, honestly, on a dirt track, you can't ask for anything better. I mean, no. unless it's four cars. But how often <laughs> do you get that? You know, I mean, well, you know, back, look at the, well, you can't back, have back four cars day. start in the back, though. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, back in the day, you used to be able to watch Rob Maya. Uh, oh, yeah. Old Man Cell, Russ Cell. Ooh. Ooh, Old Man Cell. Is that what Sorry, you said? Russ. That was Joel that said that. That was definitely Sorry, Joel. Russ, Russ and, and Cell. We're, and we're slapping him right and now. Trevor Glasser. Those three guys just, it was like a free one of them uh, shell games. So he's talking about the guys starting in the back. Mm-hmm. Look at the names he didn't mention. <laughs> Bob Jeffrey, uh, right. Bob Boyd, Darren Poffel, okay. oh Tom having, let's Wagner. Go back in, let's go back in David time. Let's go back David Hawks. I mean, you're talking about. Okay. I'm just talking about when Bob I've been Bob Jeffries. There. You're talking. I mean, Gran- yeah, Granny I Earp. I know you haven't been around Jordan a while, Jordan Yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> those were about okay, three Grant. decades you know before you were born. Yeah, I was going to say, Joel <laughs> probably wasn't even alive then. Hey, you know what? Not all of us no, but I know. with these good looks. Where did that come from, and what are you on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so, Roger. Speechless. Uh, <laughs> Roger from Roger That Barbecue says, hey, 
it was only fair to offer the money to both of them to start from the back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which, that was you know, cool, man. What what a thing to do Roger, there. Roger, you're, you're an awesome guy, and thank you for doing that. They put on a show that I don't think anybody, like we said, nobody's going to forget it anytime soon. Yep, yep. Well, and what a what a great marketing move for Wait, Roger, that oh, barbecue. Yeah. yeah, we've mentioned his name already about 20 times. So. <laughs> know, but and he got his money. It, it, well, but, <laughs> and it deserves it. Yeah, it was deserving. Was a, so, was yes. A great, a great opportunity for both those drivers, and, and I love seeing that kind of stuff. Well, you get the fans yeah. involved like that, and it, it's oh man, when you they see would those. they would have put on a good show regardless. Oh, absolutely, but putting them in the oh, back yeah. and making them put asking them to put on a show that way. Do you think we wow. would have seen the slide jobs in the past as we've seen if there wasn't an extra four hundred? The, the, the only the only difference is they'd had more laps of lap traffic to contend with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, man, oh man. I mean, that that to me that was the highlight of the week in the Northwest. Yeah. Um, the other, and we'll talk about the other thing that I thought was a real a real neat highlight. Uh, we'll talk about that later in the show because. It, it's a really cool deal. Um, very, uh, it's got a lot of uh, sentiment behind it, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But uh, moving into the modifieds, <clears throat> let's talk about the IMCA modifieds at Willamette Speedway. Uh, we saw we saw a pretty good field of cars. We saw some guys have some bad luck, have to start in the back. We saw some guys that were really good start up front, and some really guy really good guys in between. Mm-hmm. Um, Colin Weinbarger. Let's talk about that Superman car. Superman. That, hey, Colin Weinbarger with a nickname Superman, it lived up to it Saturday night. Yeah, it, and it's funny because when you and I were doing the pit cruise, right before we did the pit cruise, his dad, Scott, came up and told us a story of how he yeah. became Superman. Yeah, it had nothing to do with race cars. And, and he didn't want to put it on the car um, because... Colin he, was he, actually against it. He was because he thought it was arrogant and egotistical mm-hmm. and... Et cetera, et cetera. But because the nickname had stuck from, it Why actually not? goes back to quads. Yeah, it does. When he was riding Flying quads over the and, dunes. and being crazy on quads. That's actually how he got the nickname Superman. Right. And the logo just carried over to the race car. I think it's cool. Um, it, it, I tell you what, he's got a heck of a fan base. Yeah, he does. You know, I mean, when the Superman car shows up, it, it's, 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 again, great marketing. In, in a sense, it's almost the, the cartoon car, you know. I mean, it's, it's right. a fictional character that the kids get behind. Sure. And they love him, yeah. man. I mean. They do. Um, yeah, but he was so fast in that modify oh the night. Did you catch? <clears throat> did you catch what he was doing in the feature? Did you watch how he was driving that car different than everybody else? Because what I saw him doing, what and it started about I don't know about seven about seven laps into the feature, he he really changed the way he was driving that car. He figured it out early and he ran away from everybody. I think that was lap six. It might have been. <laughs> <laughs> but if you watch how he would enter that corner, he'd enter the corner high, and he instead of driving through the ruts, the ruts, he would drive straight over them. Yeah. And that that was, honestly, I think that was the biggest difference on why he was, other than the car was set up pretty good, but he drove over the ruts. He'd, he'd kind of get a run down the hill and come over the ruts as opposed to everybody else was trying to slide through them. And you see how the car is bouncing. And the more they slide through there, the worse it gets, well, too. Well, we saw, I mean, how many times did we see modifieds? We saw the under the underbelly. The bottom, right. Yeah. A I lot mean, of times. Not just one or two cars. Most of them. Ron Barry especially, yeah. I mean, that car was up on two well, wheels. He, he's set up like, as you mentioned in the booth up there, he's set up like Chad Slover. He had that left yep. front and tire. That car it. is stiff. And he's just carrying it down the straightaway and setting it and down. tight. Yeah. That's yeah. what causes that. It was just well, some drivers like it that way. Exactly. But yeah. he... Uh, to each their own. Uh, watching Weinbarger and how he figured that track <laughs> out. Well, I mean, he was the only 15-second car in the exactly. feature. Exactly. I mean, you look at it, he, his best time was a 15.981. Right. And then we had Bryson James, his best time, who took home second. His best time was a 16.058. Right. Not oh, far yeah. behind him. And Bryson, again, was uh, using an upper groove, kind of missing the ruts, kind of driving around him. But call him to enter a little high, and then you watch him dive down and just drive straight well, over those ruts. The guy that was always runs the top shelf at Willamette Speedway, no matter what, Dustin Cady, finished fifth. And we'll and, talk about him in just a, a second. We'll talk yeah. about him in just a second because we saw the third place finisher, John Campos, debut a new ride in the break the chain car. You know, the black and green changed his color scheme up a little bit. He had a pretty good run. Now, he had a really good race going with the 36 of Sean Maya <clears throat> about halfway through the race. Those guys were side yeah. by side for several laps. And Maya had something happen uh, with a couple laps ago, and he was, ended up a couple laps down. But, you know, Campos 
to third. And this is this kid, next kid we're going to talk about, Brad Martin. This kid impressed me Saturday night. We don't see him a lot at Willamette Speedway in the 19 racers car. Where is he from? Uh, he's from up in, I want to say, St. Helens area. St. Helens area. And that kid showed up with a car. and He was fast all day. Yeah. Oh, Almost yeah. flying, heat races. When you don't see a driver that often at, at Willamette Speedway, and Willamette can be an intimidating tracker in the Northwest because it is the size of it. It's fast. The level of competition is, I mean, probably stiffer than what you're going to see anywhere else. And we got some pretty stout. 